Welcome. In today's video, we're going to discuss developing the equation for the area of a circle using some techniques of calculus. In particular, we'll look at two techniques of integration from calculus known as trigonometric substitution and also the popular technique known as integration by parts. Before doing that, let's just quickly remind ourselves of the general equation of a circle as in this case we have a circle with the origin placed at the geometric center of the circle and you'll see that we have a horizontal axis that I've labeled X and a vertical one labeled Y. If I were to pick any point on the circle itself let me just pick some general point X comma Y the radial distance out to that point is a constant which I will just label as R and I can move this point anywhere that I'd like but it's still going to be the same constant radial distance R such that in the first case I had this horizontal distance out to the point X and this vertical distance out to the point Y in the second instance my x distance shrinks a little bit but my y distance you'll notice elongated to compensate for that and by Pythagorean's theorem I find that the equation for the e for the circle that we're interested in is x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. So that is the equation for this circle. Let me get rid of this. And if I were to solve for the x squared here, I'm going to find that x squared is equal to r squared minus y squared or x is equal to plus or minus if I take the square root of both sides r squared minus y squared. We have a plus or minus there plus meaning that we're in on this side of the circle and minus x when we're on this side of the circle. To do this problem I'm going to exploit the fact that we have symmetry here and I'm going to only solve for one-fourth of the problem in particular this fourth I'm going to call a hat as my quarter circles area that means that the entire area of the circle which I'll call A is equal to four times A hat putting in the groundwork then I can now begin the calculus approach and to do that I'm going to take a differential strip here the differential strip is located some y distance from the x-axis and it has a thickness dy that's some differential thickness in the y direction on the right hand side of this strip the x value here is the positive root of what we solve for back here namely x is equal to the square root of r squared minus y squared on the left hand side of this strip 
we see that x is just at 0. So that the width of this strip is going to be the right-hand side's value, which is this, minus the left-hand side's value, which is that. And if you do that, you'll find that the rectangle that I've hatched over here has a width of r squared minus y squared and a thickness of dy. So that the differential area of this strip, this rectangular strip, is equal to the width times the thickness or r squared minus y squared square root of that times dy. y in this particular case runs between 0 at the bottom of this quarter pur purple sector all the way to where y is the full radial height r. Let's go ahead and integrate both sides of this equation. On the left hand side then I get a hat and on the right hand side I get y going between 0 and r times the square root of r squared minus y squared times dy. And now we'll start with the first of the two integration techniques that I mentioned. This technique is known as trigonometric substitution. And to do this I'm going to let y equal r sine of theta so that if I square both sides I get y squared is equal to r squared sine squared theta and if I differentiate this I find that dy is equal to r cos theta d theta. That means that if I put in these values into my integral I have a hat is equal to the integral r squared minus the y squared is this r squared sine squared theta and the dy is this times r cos theta d theta where r cos theta d theta is outside of the radical. We also have to be careful with our limits of integration before we were integrating with respect to the variable y and y varied between 0 and r. Let's see what theta is doing because now our variable is not dy but it's really d theta and so if y was 0 on the bottom limit and if I divide both sides of this equation by r I find that sine of theta is equal to 0 Solving for theta, theta is the arc sine of 0, which is 0. And on the other hand, if on the upper limit, when y is r, and now I divide both sides of this equation by r, I get a 1 sitting on the left-hand side. So sine of theta is equal to 1. And solving for theta, theta then is the arc sine of 1, that means that theta is equal to 90 degrees, or in terms of radians, it's pi over 2. Let's clean this up a little bit algebraically. I could write this as a hat is equal to the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of the, the square root of r squared. I'm factoring that common r squared out. 1 minus sine squared theta times r cos theta d theta outside of the radical. And now I have a r squared 
and a radical on it makes that an R. And also, you'll notice that this term here, by the trigonometric identity, is equal to cosine squared theta. And so, I find that a hat is the integral from 0 to pi over 2. I get an r from this term when it comes out of the radical, multiplies with that r, and r, as we noted, is a constant. So I'm going to pull those the product of this r and that r, which becomes r squared, I'm going to pull it out of the integral. This is cos squared sitting under radical. That becomes cos. So I get a cos theta times that cos theta becomes a square. So cos squared theta d theta. The next thing we want to do is evaluate what is the integral of cos squared d theta. I go to the next page to do this, and here we're going to say, how can we evaluate this integral, which I'm calling i, of cos squared theta d theta? To do that, let's go ahead and write cos squared as cos times cos d theta. And to do the integration by parts, Let's just remind ourselves what that looks like. It says that the integral of u dv is equal to u times v minus the integral of v du. So I'm going to let u be this first cos. And I'm going to let the dv be the remaining terms here, cos theta d theta. So if I differentiate this, du becomes minus sine theta d theta. And if I integrate this, v becomes sine of theta. So let's put it all together into this form right over here. So that means that my integral, which I've called i, which is the integral of cos squared theta d theta, is, as per integration by parts, u times v, which is the product of these two terms. So that becomes sine theta cos theta minus the integral of v du. So that's the product of these two terms. That's going to be a minus sine squared theta d theta. Or I could say that this is sine theta cos theta minus and minus is a plus times. Now this sine squared, we've already kind of talked about this on the previous page. This is by a trigonometric identity equal to 1 minus cos squared theta. So I'm going to write this as the integral of 1 minus cos squared theta d theta, or this is sine of theta cos of theta plus the integral. Let me distribute the integral in. I get d theta minus the integral of cos squared theta d theta. This is sine theta cos theta plus the integral of d theta minus. This is the integral that I'm trying to solve for, so I'm going to just call this the i. And so putting all this together, then I get this i is equal to sine theta cos theta plus the integral of d theta minus that i. I'm going to bring this i to this side, so I get a plus i. So I get a 2i is equal to sine of theta cos.
cos of theta plus the integral of d theta. Let me divide both sides by 2. So I get i is 1 half sine of theta cos of theta plus a half. The integral of d theta is just simply theta plus some constant of integration. And so, in fact, let's summarize what we just did by integration by parts with this result to say that i, which was the integral of cos squared theta d theta, is equal to a half of theta, let me write that term here first, plus this half sine of theta cos of theta plus some constant of integration. Let's now go ahead and use this result on the thing that we were trying to evaluate on the previous page. So if I go back to this page and I say, okay, here I have a hat is equal to r squared times the integral of cos squared theta we just found to be a half of theta plus a half of sine theta cos theta I'm going to drop the constant of integration because I have a definite integral here. It's before we had an indefinite integral. So my definite limits of integration are going between 0 and pi over 2. And I'll also notice that I have a half that's common in here. Let me bring that out. So I get r squared over 2 of theta plus sine of theta cos of theta going between 0 and pi over 2. Let's go ahead and put our uh, limits of integration in. So I get this is equal to r squared over 2 times theta is pi over 2 plus sine of pi over 2 cos of pi over 2 that's the upper bound minus the lower I get 0 plus sine of 0 cos of 0 sine of 0 is 0 cos of pi over 2 is 0 so out of all of this, I find that r squared over 2 times pi over 2, which is this term. That's the only surviving term out of all of this. Everything else is 0. And so I find that a hat is pi r squared over 4. That means that, now let's remind ourselves, a hat is the quarter circle's area, right? And so the entire circle's area is four times that. And so as we expect, the area of the entire circle is going to be four times this, and that's going to be pi r squared. I hope all of that made sense to you. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in another future video.